Well, I, I'm so thrilled to be doing this because I really owe my presence in the classroom to Code HS. Code HS got me started as a teacher. I, I was teaching a course called Computers and I was getting a thousand yard stare from my students. Uh, it was sort of a, hey, let's learn how to use Microsoft Office and back things up. And most of the time I was running around being an IT guy, but they gave me this one class to teach. And then uh, when we were having a engagement issue, not much engagement, I said, well, let's try some programming. And we, we tried a few things and then we sort of stumbled across Code HS. I didn't realize how early in the game it was for Code HS at the time. It just seemed really good. And so my guys took the ball and ran with it. And that's the reason I'm here. I, I completely owe my, <laughs> my teaching career to, uh, to Code HS. I've done a few things before I started teaching. And most recently, uh, I have found that Code HS has, has begun offering certifications and that has fit in very nicely with our pursuit of certifications uh, you know, in our school and our use of those certifications to do things. Um, and I, I wanted to start this presentation out by um, showing a short video that should just remind us if you were watching TV at five o'clock this morning and you watched the completely automated docking of the crew two module with the ISS, where they do not allow the pilots to make any inputs at all during the last couple minutes, um, that automation and programming is just the absolutely become an underpinning of our civilization right now. That's not putting it too lightly. So everything we're doing, everything you guys are doing to help bring programming into the classroom is, is helping, is helping. So let me show you this video because my students find it inspiring. Here we go. You probably dreamed of this. You probably replayed this moment a thousand times. You probably imagined the awe-inspiring, indescribable rush of the ride. You probably celebrated the miraculous, cheered the momentous, and mourned the shocking. You probably still dream of what could be. We did. We do. And while many thought we were through, no. We've been learning. We've been building. We've been training. And now, it's time. Because the next frontier is not just for the next generation. It's for this generation. It's for me, and it's for you. For everything we still dream about. We go as Artemis. All right. Uh, one of the astronauts in that video was uh, Megan MacArthur, who was actually piloting the um, Crew Dragon 2 um, mission. Hold on. Let me see if I can avoid this from playing again. Hold on. Uh oh. There we go. Now let's go to my next slide. All right, so when we talk about certifications and how we might use them, we're all familiar with the trials and tribulations of the AP exam. And I have come to think of the AP as a cert. It, it, it's a cert that people have used and chased and agonized over and consulted with students and you know, made tried to make students feel better when they do poorly on it. Uh, it's a start, it, and it's a start. But I think, I think there's a way to have a certify a certification or a testing system that's better than the AP that that suits all of our needs, including industry and agencies' needs, better than the AP does. And I mean, I just came from an event this morning with industry people that are just crying out for coders. They are, they want our students, all this, all of you guys who are listening to me, all of your students are needed to help build things. 
And we have to look at the AP. I, I like to look at the AP as a cert, but I think we can do better. Some of the issues that I find with the AP are that it's only offered one day a year. Uh, so if you have a bad day on that day or there's some conflict, uh, when I worked at uh, Avon Old Farms, we had lacrosse players and uh, they had a big lacrosse game. And uh, my guys really weren't uh, at their best on the day of the AP. Uh, uh, it's not recognized typically by colleges for placement at the moment. Uh, if you have an AP, even a good score, they're still going to put you in CS1, which is okay, I guess. But it's just another reason that it's not the be all and end all. I personally find that when you're looking at FRQs on the AP, you have to use sort of conventional English language skills a little too much. It, it becomes more of a sort of puzzle solving to figure out exactly what they want to do to the point where when we review for the AP, uh, we spend a lot of time looking at FRQs going, what exactly does the college board want us to do here? You know, and, and peeling through those directions and we're looking for a phrase that says, write a method or write a class. Uh, and you know, that is important in coding. It's important to see what, to ask yourself, what, what is the direction? Because nobody starts with just a blank page and starts writing code. But I personally find that AP is a little too heavy on that. And that even in the MCQs, there, there are ambiguous directions or possible shades of meaning that are tough and that more fall into the sort of English language difficulties. And then this last bullet point I have here about the AP that is really sad in light of the tremendous need for coding and people with coding skills that out there in industry, out there in government agencies, out there in your community, because of the way our civilization is becoming automated, the need for everybody to be building mobile apps is that the AP can intimidate students. It, it's, it's perceived in the school communities as you know, very difficult, even among the APs. Uh, it can keep students from taking the course. And then you have a problem of a student who is having a bad day or didn't do well in the exam for whatever reason, and they draw that conclusion that no, none of us wants those students to draw, which is I'm done with coding, this isn't for me, this is for somebody else, this is for this other type of person. And nobody, nobody wants those people, nobody wants a student to stop coding at age 16. So it's the, the intimidation factor is real. Let's go on. This is basically, this slide is basically a restatement of what I just said. You know, we're all, all of us teachers are being careful to not let our courses turn into silos. We don't want to. We don't want to have, you know, eight or ten bright coders that can represent the school and get the school plaudits for coding. When what industry needs is a hundred coders and from all different types of people with all different types of skills. We don't want to be making silos. We want to be broadening the base of our computer science education and getting more and more students involved and interested in taking part. Students who can work in teams. So this issue of the AP and the AP course being a, a challenge is something we all need to think hard about. So let's think about some alternatives. Suppose instead of the AP, you could take an exam when you're ready to take it. Uh, if you're ready, if you're feeling like I'm, I'm super fast, I'm one of these bright coders and I've, I've got some experience maybe even coming into high school, what if I could just get the cert? You know, what if, I could, what if I could take a cert that's equivalent to the AP and move on to something else or try a different language? Uh, that would be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? Uh, and if I was, it was getting to be March or April and I had this feeling like, I'm really not ready for this thing. And I don't, I don't really want to take an exam that's just going to confirm my suspicions that I'm not ready. What if you could just postpone it and say, you know, I'd rather take this thing in July or August. What if there was an exam or a cert that would give you a result quickly instead of waiting for a couple of months, uh, not knowing whether you're going to go on, whether you're going to continue with coding. You know, you're, you're having to sign up and make this important decisions about what your future courses are 
while you're in this limbo waiting for your AP scores to come back to see whether you're, you're in your own mind are any good at this or not. Um, you know, you, it would be better, it would be a better world if we could learn really quickly whether we achieved the result we were hoping for on the test. What if we had a credential, a cert that would maybe qualify us for a job, one, one that would really shorten down an interview process and give a potential employer at a you know app building studio or a cybersecurity company or the local police department where one of my uh, one of my students is going to be doing an internship this summer that it would make it easier for that person who's doing the hiring for those jobs to say you know what this guy really knows something about this topic we can bring him on board and maybe train him a little bit but he's got this kind of basic bunch of skills. What if we had an exam or a cert that or something that would indicate to everybody that you, we're lifelong learners, that we're this is something we can propel ourselves toward and that we want to get better and that we're going to pursue these things and not just have the certs that we have now, but that maybe we would be the type of person that would want to go get another cert in the future. What if we could work to improve during vacations rather than just pinning our calendar on April the 24th or May the 16th or whatever it is this year. But what if we could say, you know what, this summer I'm going to spend some time because I've got time and I'm going to take this cert exam in August, on August the 15th, because I've got a nice chunk of time there for eight weeks to get ready for that cert and I'm going to take it. And what if, what if you could set yourself apart in applications for college and applications for internships because you're you're specializing or you're showing a skill set that is a little bit tweaked, a little bit different, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little more suited for a job or an internship than some other people's are, or something where you could at least have a conversation about what this cert means. So those are all things that we could talk about if we're talking about certifications. So I want to again underline that there's just tremendous demand for what you guys are teaching, what we're teaching to our students. There's tremendous demand and, and everything we do needs to reinforce that. That, that coding is a good path forward for, for all of them. You know, the ones that don't think that they're so great at coding or that they don't want to spend every waking minute working on their coding. It's a skill that they can bring into all the aspects of their life. And I'd give you as an example, what's happening at GM. I mean, GM, great example of, you know, an older Rust Belt company, right? Heavy manufacturing, you think of people putting in, you know, their, their shifts and doing repetitive, boring jobs all the time. They're, they're in the middle of completely reinventing themselves and going all electric. And when you have an all electric vehicle, it's a lot simpler vehicle. So the mechanical side isn't actually as important as the software side. And the way the GM is going to build out, it's, it's, is going to reinvent itself is with a ton of software guys. And they're in the middle of building a kind of a new workforce really. And it's, it's, it's thousands and thousands of people. They just hired 3000 this past March, and they're looking for many times that going forward into the future. I mean, it's just really good news that we need, that we have an obligation to share with our students. Lockheed Martin, where I just spent the morning at CodeQuest, they put up a, a poll saying, you know, how many, how many engineers do you think we're looking to hire in the next 10 years? You know, when, when some of our students are going to be graduating from college and the choices were, you know, a couple thousand or maybe 3,000 or 110,000. And the answer is in the next 10 years, Lockheed Martin is looking to hire 110,000 engineers. So think about that. There we have way more unfilled jobs than there are people who can step in and help them. They really need help. And they are looking for interns in our high schools. They're not just looking, they're not just hitting the college recruiting fairs. They're coming to us in our high schools and going, give me some applications because I want to bring people in to Lockheed Martin to work in the summers for 20, 22, 25 bucks an hour. And we'll have a really great job waiting for them after they graduate from college. But we want to, we're like a 
pro baseball team. We want to find some talent out there and take it off the market and not let other people get it. That's that's their attitude right now. All right, so let's talk about Java certs a little bit. And some of my slides are a little bit out of order. Um, but uh, while we're on the topic of uh, this path, I, 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 and we, we have been talking about the AP, so that's why this slide is OK. Uh, I look at the code HS. I'm very grateful that code HS is offering their certs and I use them and I'm excited to have my students taking them. I look at the code HS Java one cert as a touch easier than the AP, which I think is great because there's less chance of kids getting frightened away from coding. If they can think to themselves as they're in my AP Java course, I can take this Java one cert walk away with something that makes me feel pretty good about my work this past year rather than scratching my head and wondering whether a three is acceptable or a two is acceptable or what did Mr. Thompson do wrong or whatever. I mean, I got some guys with fives last year and also got some guys who were who came back to me and said, you know, do I have to take this again next year, et cetera. And then there's a, still another cert. There's the Oracle 811 cert, which is all multiple choice. It's a little harder, I think, than the AP and you, you but you would put in, the same amount of work that you would put in to do the code HS course and then study a couple of other things and then you'd be ready to take Oracle 811. And then out there in the mist beyond both the AP, the code HS Java 1 cert and the Oracle 811 cert is Oracle 819. And if you did a second year of Java or you worked really hard, you could probably, I think, and Oracle 819 is within reach of an advanced high school student. And the cool thing there is that you could walk into a company with an Oracle 819 and they'd say, go sit over there on that couch. We got something for you to do right now. You're hired. So, all right. I want to take a look at two different learning paths here. And I, I think this is important when we think about certs because most certs are built for adult learners and career changers. The code HS certs are grateful, I'm grateful to say, are built for high school students. But adult learners and career changers are, uh, you know, kind of different animals from the people that, that we all teach. And we need to just be aware of that as we look at all the different certs and evaluate them. Because adult learners and career changers, they tend to work in larger chunks of time. Um, high school students, we all know, you guys know, they're they have small chunks of time. They, they, they are doing clubs, they're doing sports, they have five other courses they're doing. So we want to be careful. We don't want to just say, hey, buddy, go take, you know, go sit for this Oracle cert. We want to always keep in mind how busy our students are, and we don't want to throw them at something that's not, not a good fit for what they're after. And you're just going to have to evaluate each cert. And, you know, if you do nothing else but think about, hey, I'm going to really try putting some of these guys into some of these code HS certs, then that's probably a pretty smart uh, way to get started with certs. Hold on. So if we know that these adult learners and career changers are pursuing certs that take a lot of time, but we know that, and, and maybe our students don't have that much time or don't, you know, can't, can't devote what it takes to get an Oracle 819 right off the bat. How do we get them on that path? Well, again, you come back to the code HS certs and say, not only am I proving that this student has some good facility with JavaScript, but um, he's learning what it takes to prepare for a cert. He might have to learn what it feels like to get up from a cert exam and feel like they didn't maybe didn't pass it. Uh, that whole experience is, uh, you know, in all its aspects is worth doing. And the code HS certs are a great first cert. And most of my guys have, have passed them. Um, I had one guy that didn't pass his JavaScript cert the first time he was disappointed. And I said, listen, this is like a, this is like a sports season. You know, you're going to lose some games and you're going to win some. And he, uh, I pointed him at a section of the JavaScript course that he hadn't spent much time on, and uh, he just passed the passed the JavaScript cert on his second try. 
And, you know, I would also point out, and this is going to take your skills with individualized learning and knowing your people named and known is what we all try to do with our students. And for some students, it's not really a good idea for them to chase certs. You know, this is not a situation. I'm, I, I'm not so sure that I would want to have a classroom day that's the day everybody sits for the JavaScript cert from CodeHS. I think it's, it's, it's an individualized thing. And I think there's always going to be some students that just don't want to get, they just don't get too excited about certs. Now, the thing you got to be ready for, which has taken me by surprise a few times, is if you just put out among your students an awareness that uh, these certs are out there, you might be surprised that a student that you're looking at as sort of a middle row student or even a back row student is going to say, Mr. Thompson, you know, I really want to go after this cyber one cert. I had just had a student this spring do that with me. And I was really pleased, you know, that he he understood or maybe his parents understood that this was a this was a useful thing for him to do. And um, you might be surprised as teachers who comes forward and says, I want to I want to do that cert you were just talking about. So let's talk about some of the specific specific certs that I'm pretty familiar with. And I, I'm grateful to CodeHS for rolling this out. And, and it does take a significant commitment by any company and certainly by CodeHS to actually offer these and to go ahead and make the tests and secure them and test them, et cetera. Um, so I'm very grateful that CodeHS has these. And I really like for your first year uh, students, excuse me, I wrote Java on this slide. I don't know what I was thinking. First year, oh yes, this is a this is a Java level one. So this Java, this cert is the Java cert, and I think this is a great alternative to the AP. Um, and if you do, if you look at all the Code HS uh, module quizzes, and you're ready to work for an hour to an hour and a half on multiple choice questions, I think there's 40 questions you can pass this Java level one cert um, with a grade of about 70%. So I really like this CodeHS Java cert as an alternative to the AP for some of my students. And my students, some of my students in AP Java are gonna take, have taken this already. I've, I had a student, a faster student that took it in January and passed it. And I've got some others that are planning on taking it towards the end of the academic year. Okay, now we come to the JavaScript cert, which I think is great for different reasons. Um, I think this is a way to, you know, I typically teach the intro JavaScript as a first year coding course. So we have some people that are sort of getting started in coding. And some of those people are going to want to take coding pretty seriously and they're going to want to prove their knowledge. And uh, I think it's great to point them at one of these, uh, this JavaScript cert or maybe the Python cert. Um, and I've found, uh, that this is a nice cert. It's uh, it's it's rigorous uh, and worth doing. If you guys are going to do this, make sure you take a look at the um, animation and games section. Uh, there tend to be some questions in there on timer, um, but it's a great it's a great cert, well organized. And let's see. And then we have this cyber certificate. Now you guys all know, you teachers all know that um, cyber is such a super hot topic and. Uh, uh, I teach a one semester course in cyber where we kind of barely scratch the surface, but we do our best. We use the Code HS cyber course, and which is a nice course. And I like this cert. This is again some something that a student can take away and have to say, you know, I've I've got some familiarity with cyber. Um, a very legit, you know, I like this. I like this certificate, and I would wouldn't hesitate to ha ask students to, if they would consider taking this. Briefly, uh, some of the other certs that we look at that might possibly be suitable for high school students. The CompTIA ITF Plus is a sort of general certificate that's been built for high school students. It's a little on the expensive side. It costs about 250 bucks to take the exam. And then out there, kind of in the ether, would be Network Plus and Security Plus, which Security Plus is really, really hard. That would be sort of post Code HS Cyber Certificate. Network Plus, I kind of like. I've had one student take it uh, because it does make you mess with networking stuff, and that is an important part of cyber. So those are two other things I kind of like. 
This is a page uh, from CompTIA about what the ITF Plus is about. And you know, you can develop a strategy for getting ready for these certs also. Um, but again, you know, if you've already taken uh, one or two of the code HS certs, you probably be, be less reticent to pursue uh, some of these other uh, certs. All right, when you get done with code HS, the way code HS certs work is you will get, you will purchase a voucher. We purchased a voucher that gives us, or we purchased 10 vouchers and our students will uh, take the exam and then we'll get a report like this saying who's passed. Um, and uh, I've got one student who I don't think has taken it yet. And another student who took it, but it hasn't been graded yet. Um, and so this is the level of, of report that you get. You don't really get a, uh, you know, sort of by topic or by question uh, result uh, on this, but that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, this is a slide about, this is the official Oracle 811 uh, page. And um, Oracle has, you know, its own training schemes. There are all kinds of other things. There, there's books you can buy to get ready for it. But I, I would have you guys think, and this would be a nice thing to kind of keep in the back of your head, that if you complete the code HS Java, AP Java course, you'd only have a few other things to do in addition to that, to get ready for this 811 cert. And Oracle cert's a nice thing to have. So these are some of the topics. I've got three slides in a row here that are a review of the Oracle 811 requirements. And if you really look at these, you're probably not gonna see too much that's not in the Code HS AP Java course. Uh, if I look at it real quick. Um, do while, uh, you can see on the bottom right, do while is not in the uh, AP Java subset. And let's see what else is there. Some of the string methods might be not stressed too much in the AP. And the rest of this is pretty close. Like I, I think you would find if you took a careful look at the 811 requirements that there isn't that much, maybe there's try catch is not in the AP. And some of the exceptions are not, but there is, this is a nice little tiny jump beyond the AP for people to shoot at. All right, so what have, our, what have my guys actually gotten so far? We've gotten JavaScript uh, certs, we've gotten Java 1 certs, we've gotten that cyber cert, and I think there's a brand new cyber level 2 cert. Uh, we've used 14 vouchers this year, next year we're going to use 20. I've had four guys gain the Oracle 811. I've got one guy kind of aimed at the Oracle 819 and I've got one person who's got this. No, I don't have somebody with either Security Plus or ITF Plus. We're just looking at it right now. I would love to find an Android cert, but I haven't found one yet. Of course, that you could say that building an Android app and getting it on the Google Play Store is probably pretty good proof of knowledge. And I believe that is my deck. So let me stop sharing. Um, I will be happy to take questions now. Uh-oh, am I having an audio problem? How am I doing? You're good. Um, taking a look at the parking lot. Um, let's see. Uh, we do have, a, yeah, we do have a question from Manny on, um, Joe, what course progression do you use? Is it AP Principles Year One? We don't teach principles. Uh, we teach, uh, we have uh, coding sort of salted into some of the math and science courses when our students are freshmen. And then I get them sophomore year for an intro class. And my intro class uses the Code HS Intro JS course. It also uses the Code HS Intro Python course. And we do actually do a little bit of web design too there. We sort of take a tour of the galaxy in the intro class. And then we have AP Java that mostly our student, our juniors take that. And then senior year, I teach uh, one course in cyber and one course in mobile app development. So it's a little bit unusual. Great question. We have a question from Fernando. Um, if I offer students these certs, 
then if they pass, are they recognized by employers? And so students do get um, basically a secure uh, certification uh, with a special um, verification code that they can you know, put on their resumes, LinkedIn profiles, college applications. Yeah, I have a, I have a, I'd like to extend that answer and say that I certainly feel, and I, I would say to any student who's asking me about any cert, that a great way to give yourself a leg up in looking for an actual job in the industry or with an agency is to get some certs. The question is, which certs and how do you get going with certs? And I think the bet, one of the best ways to start out is to take one of these code HS certs. And then once you have that confidence that you prepared for and passed and have the credential, then you might might look at some others. Um, you know, and so would you would you as an employer choose somebody who had a cert over somebody who had no certs? Probably, but is the code HS cert specifically sort of I'm ready to walk in and be a junior developer in a in a studio? Probably not quite there. Um, but I really like the idea of putting students on this path where they've got some confidence from getting the code HS cert. They know what it means to prepare for the cert and be ready on the day. And they know also, hey, if they're not ready, they postpone it a little bit and take it at another time. Um, so they get used to this idea and then they do earn something maybe beyond the code HS cert and they can really shorten down the hiring time and really set themselves apart by having a cert or two. So both, so my answer is both. <laughs> I like that question, or I like that answer, Joe. Um, we have another question from Louise. Um, how do you deal with answers for code HS being available on the internet? I struggle with that all year. Um, yeah. I can, I can take that one a little bit. Sure. Um, so the certification environment um, is a little bit different from our uh, normal uh, quiz environment, which, um, you know, as much as we try, uh, can be can be hard to um, keep a handle on. Um, so uh, the first thing is all of our certifications, um, they're going to be, every test looks a little bit different mm -hmm. um, rather than them all being the same question. We have question banks um, that are kind of randomly pulled. So students are getting tested on the same topics with the same level of frequency, but they're not getting the same questions. Um, mm -hmm. And so no two students are going to see the same certification. Um, mm -hmm or you know, even the same questions. They'll, they'll see the same, some students will see the same questions, but they won't see it in the same order and um, not every student will see every question. Um, the second thing is we do have a secure mode, which uh, basically means that students um, cannot copy and paste. They can't open um, other, like if they try to open any other uh, code HS tabs, it'll redirect them straight to uh, the certification exam so that they can't, um, you know, go other places um, to check that out. So um, those are a couple of ways. I don't know if you have anything to add, Joe. Well, I, I, I think that the questioner raises a great point, but I, I think one of the answers to that is that there is tremendous value by imparted to a certification by an organizer who is putting time and money into the problem of keeping it secure. And that's part of the value of a good cert. And with code HS certs, you're getting that same type of experience. You're not paying as much as you might pay for some other certs. And then you need to understand that as you go and take other certs and you're going, why am I paying $100 for this Oracle 811? Or why am I paying 275 for this uh, ITF plus? That's part of the deal is that you're getting you know, a secure question environment. And that's, that's how code HS or the other organizations uh, maintain the value of their certifications that they offer. Great. Um, so our vouchers are uh, individually purchased. If you do send um, a message to sales at codehs.com, we can get you a quote, but it, it kind of depends on the number being purchased and a couple other factors. Yeah, I have a suggestion on that too. First of all, I, I would definitely suggest that you make sure that your students have some kind of skin in the voucher. Do not just have your school buy all the vouchers. The students should pay a little something because it gives them an investment in it and it makes them take it seriously. 
The second thing I would say is to consider as you do your yearly contract with Code HS that you just wrap some vouchers into that. Just take a stab at how many vouchers you think you might want for the upcoming year if you guys are talking to a rep from Code HS right now and make sure that you know, you're gonna be getting some vouchers that you can use in there. So you would get the vouchers in the contract and then you would turn around and charge your students whatever you think is appropriate, including, I mean, I think, I think for some students, you know, paying the full amount of what your, your school is paying for the voucher would be reasonable based on my experience. And we did have a good question in the parking lot that might be worth just mentioning, um, but for retakes, they can retake the exam as many times as needed um, and they would just use a new voucher. So each mm -hmm. code is good for one attempt. Yeah. And that's consistent with other certs that are out there. Um, we have a question on the A plus certifications. So that's the sure. Yeah. Familiar um, with that? I hold one. Yeah. So we, I would say, the best uh, thing to prepare would be um, we have you would, it would be a two course um, series would be our uh, fundamentals of cyber course and then our advanced mm. cyber course. Um, I don't believe we offer full coverage across that pathway, mm. but um, it will get you pretty far. Um, and then you you just would need to supplement a few a few items, and we do have alignments for that available. Yeah, you guys, Cody just thinks about certifications when you build your courses. You guys put me on to ITF Plus when you were building your cyber course last year. I'm like, what is this ITF Plus? And I went and checked it out, and I was like, hmm, okay. So yeah. you know, it's really it's part of the whole process to like look at the exam objectives for the certs you want to prepare your students for. And look at look at it through their lens and see what kind of investment they would need to make, and then try to match that up with all the different options that you have in front of you as a teacher. Great. Um, I know we do have a few more questions, but um, we do have the uh, conference closing and raffles in one minute, and I want to make sure that everybody gets there. So sure. I'm going to ask uh, Haley if you can just copy those questions into the parking lot. Um, we'll go ahead and get those answered and then um, send them out to everybody afterwards. Um, 